Hi, I'm Carmen and welcome to the Featherweight Shop. Today I want to show you our newly developed thread jam removal tool. But first, let's look at why you would need a tool like this. A common question we get here at the Featherweight Shop is what happened to my machine? I was sewing along and now the hand wheel won't turn at all. Whenever this happens, it's almost always from a thread jam, which is a little piece of thread caught between the bobbin case base and the hook assembly. And when this happens, it usually occurs from the hand wheel being turned the wrong direction. Uh, the hand wheel on a featherweight should always turn towards the operator. This machine's turned around backwards so you can see it, but if I was sitting here sewing, the hand wheel should always turn towards the operator. We found that whenever it gets turned the opposite direction, away from you, that's not what you're supposed to do, the reason is when you reach the end of a seam and you raise your presser foot and you're trying to pull your fabric out, you've often experienced that it's kind of stuck. Well, the natural tendency is to rock the hand wheel to get it to come loose. And it starts to come loose and that is what is causing us a thread jam. Just for information's sake, the proper time to pull your fabric out is when your take-up lever is at the very top. Not the needle being at the top, but the take-up lever here, this piece being at the very top. So we've, we've stopped, we've, we've raised our presser foot, we pulled the fabric out, no problems. But if you wiggle the hand wheel, you pull thread back in between uh, these two pieces and it will lock the machine up like this one is right here where this hand wheel will not turn. The first thing you want to do when checking for a thread jam is to remove the needle plate. So we'll set our fabric aside and the needle plate is held on by these two screws right here. We use the long Vera screwdriver uh, to remove those. And then we take the needle plate off, which is easiest done with the machine tipped up just a little bit. If you try to raise the, uh, the bed extension, it will hit on the needle plate and you can't take it off. But now once the, the needle plate is off the machine, the hand wheel turns just fine. But we actually haven't done anything to remove the thread jam. Previously, when a thread jam like this would occur, your only option was to remove the bobbin case base and to find that little piece of thread. There's a couple things that make this a difficult task, however. First is this little Gibbs screw. It's often difficult to remove, especially without the small Vera screwdriver. And once you remove that screw and open up this piece here, which is called the Gibb hook, the hook assembly or the bobbin case base actually only comes out in one spot comes out just fine right there, but if we move it to any different spot, it won't come out. And the issue is, if you have a thread jam and you can't move this, you can't get it to the spot where it's going to come out. Now, the bobbin case base and the hook assembly have this little section here, this little slot where there's an opening. And you can see the rest of the hook assembly does not have that opening and the thread gets caught in one of these places here where there is no opening. And so we need to be able to rotate it around to where the thread would be loose in that slot. Here's where we often see damage occur. If you try to get that to move with the needle plate still on and you force the hand wheel, you'll snap off this piece right here, which is the positioning finger. That positioning finger there goes in this slot on the bottom of the needle plate right there and if you force the hand wheel it snaps that that finger off. If this finger breaks off by forcing the hand wheel that's a costly repair. So you don't want to force the hand wheel but you also don't want to pry it loose with a screwdriver either. That is why Burl, the tech manager of our shop here, he developed this tool right here. This is a thread jam removal tool and what it does is it allows you to get the bobbin case base to spin freely without um, without removing it from the machine and also without opening up the gib hook. The way this tool works is it goes over this center pin and into these two holes right here. You can see that it goes on like that 
and then it's locked into place and it can easily turn that bobbin case base without putting any pressure on that positioning finger. Here's an important point. It's essential that you first remove the needle plate off the machine before freeing a thread jam. If you don't, you can easily break this positioning finger off because it's important that it freely rotates when getting a thread jam out. And it can't rotate while the needle plate is still on the machine. So always remove the needle plate first before freeing a thread jam. Once the bobbin case base is loose, that thread will be off over to the side. And now it's going to either fall out that gap or these little teeth here on the side, those little teeth there are meant to cut thread and then we'll just pulverize that remaining thread. And all this is done while this is still on the machine. So here, I'm gonna show you again on this machine. If you tip the machine up, raise the bed extension. Now you wanna put a towel or something in here so that the bed extension doesn't hit all the way against the screw. I'm just gonna put my finger there so that it doesn't hit. And then you take the tool, put it onto the bobbin case base until it locks into place and then you can either turn the tool here, or in this case, you can also turn the hand wheel. And with that locked into place, look at that, starting to spin. And now, now we're free. Now that little piece of thread around the outside of the hook assembly is the most common occurrence for a thread jam. But occasionally you'll get one like this here where it's wrapped around the inside there. Uh, so the first thing I do is to take my thread jam tool and get, get the bobbin case base to move freely. And once it moves freely, then I'll take the thread of stats and I'll pull the loose piece out and discard it. Okay, now that we have the thread jam removed, we want to put the machine back together. And it's important we do it in a certain order so that it'll actually sew again. So the first thing to do is to make sure that that positioning finger, that finger right up there, is right up at the top. And then we put the needle plate on, wiggle it into position here, and then we want to look again to make sure that that positioning finger is in the slot. And see, it's not in the slot, it, put, it came out. So what we want to do is raise the needle plate up enough that we can get it into the slot And then once we're sure it's in the slot, then we can put the screws in place and the machine will sew. This tool is available now and it will work on all of your common hook assemblies for the featherweight from about 1935 on. If, if however, you have one of the 1933 or 34 uh, featherweights with this hook assembly, it's this one that you can identify because the gib hook uh, screw is a slot instead of just a hole there. Um, it, you can see that the holes are wider and so it takes a, a different size tool and we have that available. Just make sure when you're checking out on the website that you choose the appropriate year for your featherweight. And if you have any questions, give us a call here at the Featherweight Shop. We're always glad to help.